I'm going to talk about some projects that I'm doing this summer and that I will continue to do in the fall and hopefully much longer thereafter. And that is looking at computing problems, uh, computing um, setups uh, in the Cleveland State Classroom. And particularly, we're doing computing uh, classrooms at the Ohio Super Computing Center. This is work done by me, Thijs Heus, in the physics department, and also uh, co director of the Center for Applied Data and Analysis Modeling here at Cleveland State, and in collaboration with John Ryan, my Adam co director in math, Stephen Kennedy, who's a great help as the uh, graduate assistant on this particular project, and Jessica Bickle, who is one of our guinea pigs in figuring out how to set up the class properly and see um, what kind of barriers uh, need to be overcome while doing this. So let's have a quick rationale for why we're doing what we're doing and then have a bit of a guided tour through the facilities. So for starters, um, computer skills and data science and data management and big data are all buzzwords and they're becoming more important, more and more important and crucial skills for all of our students to learn, no matter basically what kind of you know, what kind of discipline they are, what kind of um, job they actually um, <coughs> will grow into after this. They'll need to be able to deal with data. They will need to be able to interpret data from um, from newspaper articles, etc., etc. The entire society becomes more and more. Um, data heavy. So the best way to prepare our students for that environment, of course, is to by doing it in class. And by doing it in class, we can do it two ways. We can do a single class, one semester, very heavy, and try to cram as much as possible in our students. But the last time uh, that I took a class in computer programming back in undergrad, I was very adept in C after one semester and two semesters later, I forgot completely everything. So maybe a more viable way of doing these kind of uh, skills across the curriculum is to keep on letting them repeat in different classes, in different semesters. But of course, computing is a, and data analysis is a skill that is um, often fairly perpendicular to what's traditionally taught in those classes. It's often, and quite often these computer problems are hard and is definitely time consuming to set up. And the nitty gritty details of how to set up a, a computing environment, making sure that all the, um, um, that everything is safe, that everything is easily properly scaffolded, et cetera, et cetera, for our students. That uh, is often pretty tough to get going and who actually ever has the time for that, right? So part of the um, educational mission of the Adam Research Center is to make these kind of things as accessible as possible. We have, like I said, Stephen Kennedy is our graduate assistant who is here to help setting up classes for faculty around campus as much as possible. We have identified a bunch of different classes that, um, that look interesting. And for now, to make sure that we um, set things up properly. We start out with a couple of physics classes to work from this fall and then hopefully in spring we're going to further expand. So what did we decide to do? We decided to do not to have a um, have those classes on desktops within uh, on campus which would have meant that students need to travel to campus, cannot do necessarily, cannot do their homework uh, over the weekend, etc., etc., we decided not to go for a uh, software that they can install on their own uh, computers for one for equity type purposes. Not everybody has a laptop. Two, because um, if you have an environment on some kind of random and uh, remote laptop, you never know whether the installation was done properly, and you may end up in troubleshooting exercises that are just not necessary. So that naturally these kind of problems lend themselves to doing setups in some kind of cloud. What kind of cloud can we do? Well, sure, we can go to Google, Amazon or whatnot, but 
we also have the supercomputing center in Ohio, and that is a great resource for these kind of things. And as a matter of fact, they really have a dedicated setup for exactly this. So why the Ohio Supercomputing Center? Well, it's a controllable environment. It's um, easy to log into. It's easy to get access to and to log in from around the world. No special setup needed. You can just log in through a web browser. We'll get to that in a second. And of course, all kinds of computing available. Uh, uh, computing capacity is available. So you can easily get a 100 person class going. Um, now, even if uh, in my kind of cases, the computing resources that the students are going to need are not necessarily super big, uh, so we won't tax the OSC resources too much, but uh, it's good to have them in a controllable, secure environment. And um, two final very practical points. The classroom projects are for free for Ohio colleges like Cleveland State. And um, very important here is that OSC has a fantastic and very responsive help desk who is always happy to come up with good solutions to new problems that may arise and come up with some good, uh, custom, uh, customized solutions. So now let's uh, now that we have a little bit of a setup, let's go have a look at how to do this. So first of all, if you go to after you create an account and all that, and you go to my.osc.edu, you can log in. It's rules, and you can set a project, create new project, and click on classroom project. Once you've done that. Um, fill out the other details. I won't do that this time, of course. Um, basically, several seconds later, the project is going to be made. And after a little bit of intervention from that great help desk, you and a couple of questions that come out of that, you have a new classroom project set up. Those classroom projects are separate from any kind of uh, other computing project that you may have going on. So in my case, I have my research project going on and several classroom projects. Uh, right here, one for mechanics and vibrations and one for environmental physics. So now let's have a look at that environmental physics project. To go there, we start out with class.osc.edu. Class OC edu. And let me for fun start by logging out, then you end up class OCEDU, you end up over here, log in with set account, and then you can pick whatever uh, application you want to use, and there are several available. Right now, directly available are at least Jupyter, R, IQMOL, I do not know what that is, and QGIS, uh, just, but uh, anything else they might be able to work with and come up with a way to um, set that up as well, including since there is direct access to the supercomputer itself, let's say MATLAB is easily accessible as well. Now, once we're here, we're setting up, in our case, we're gonna do a Jupyter project. We set up a couple of parameters, like for what classroom are we looking, and how big is the job going to be? At this point, we don't need a very big job, but you could do something longer. If that's necessary for this particular classroom, it's always kind to keep the time limited. Wait for a moment until the class is starting. I already have a classroom starting. And then we connect to the Jupyter notebook. Boom, 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 boom. And something like this pops up. If you're an instructor, um, you may want to go, if you're like me and you've set up a couple of scripts to get you started, you may go to, in my case, a toolkit with some ugly code that I cooked and that I'm happy to share, just so that it's easy to start a class, get a class going, 
to set up all the directories and make sure that you can exchange files with your students quickly. So this looks scary, it probably is, but it's also something that nobody ever should have to touch, other than your friendly people at Alum to help you out. So we set up a class, um, install all the packages, everything you need, may need, and start a couple of groups. In this case, I just start groups uh, based on the student ID, and I already pre-populated a couple of exercises, a couple of computer exercises that our students will want to go do, and they are then copied to the group directory so that they can start working on that. Now, what would a student see? Let's flip to the student side of things. If a student, after logging in, comes here and clicks on the directory that I tell them to, that is materials, and in materials there's a groups directory, and in a groups directory there's their group name, and then they go to the starting point and they find their start here, which should be a decent prompt. They'll find a document that looks like this, which is essentially the table of content. We'll make them sure that they're going to run all the cells. And this is really what they're quickly going to look at. In environmental physics, the plan is to have the students work at least a whole lot during class time so that it's properly scaffolded, that I can help them out quickly with any kind of, any kind of problem. And once they're up and going, they will be able to run uh, to keep on going from the comforts of their home. So for each and every one of our projects, Project Zero is just a getting started and how do I calculate anything, how do I plot, what kind of language is Python. Uh, there are three buttons, there's a little bit of an explanation. There are three buttons. Um, one is retrieve uh, some kind of skeleton startup file that you may want to work from. Uh, once you've done all your homework, you can submit it back to the instructor. The instructor grades it or gives feedback. And after that, the uh, student uh, gives it back into the student directories and the student can then have a look at the feedback and maybe after that resubmit and keeps on cycling through until everybody's happy, whatever the setup of the class is. Now let's have a look, since this is the um, uh, web bulb temperature uh, project, what would a project like that look like? So we retrieve the data, it says that we are retrieving, excellent, and then we click here and once we click on the link, we're going to open up the actual computer lab. This may, this may take a minute or two of getting used to for the students, but uh, they'll um, pick it up pretty quickly. So here, and this is one of the nice things about um, Jupyter Notebooks, uh, Python Notebooks, is that you can mix up written language with actual code. Uh, the coding and the structured thinking is what we want to teach them here, but the context is important to have in terms of text as well. So here we're learning about the dew point temperature and the wet bulb temperature that basically take the amount of humidity into account and can tell you when it's a muggy day or when muggy turns into deathly. So compare the dew point temperature, wet bulb temperature, and the feels like temperature. Basically the feels like temperature is something that goes way over 100 degrees but I never know what that feels like over 100 degrees, but uh, what I do know is that as soon as the wet bulb temperature gets close to the temperature of your body, sweating is not going to do it anymore to get rid of the heat of your body. So after an explanation, we can start with a quick question. What is happening actually? Uh, uh, can you more or less rehash, explain what's in the previous set of information and give me some kind of answers. Uh, uh, we can click on anything, we can then write down in a box, or we can even say if we don't want to write down in the box, if the student doesn't want to write down in the box, he clicks the plus, they click the plus and say uh, this is because cookies are yummy. And, um, and 
and then we should for not forget to make this markdown because then it just is text. Of course, you can also make a text uh, with an equation because we're still a physics course. So you can say dollar yummy squared. Like so, etc. etc. There are a lot of things, and all, we'll get to a few other things that you uh, that we can. Okay, then there's one ugly step. We need to load some libraries. We can do that. And then we get into the fun physics. Basically, black body radiation, um, radiation that comes off your body. What kind of, uh, to calculate that, we need a couple of physics constants that we have discussed in class and that I might give them to the students, especially early on. And then we can ask questions and come up with answers as far as scaffolded as we want to. But in this case, what is the maximum output due to radiation if the temperature around you is 70 degrees? Well, that goes with that Boltzmann uh, equation over uh, that Stefan Boltzmann equation over here, black body radiation, and we can calculate an answer that is effectively just saying the amount of power is some kind of constant times the area of your body times the temperature to the power fourth. If you do that, and we've done that already in uh, homework, we end up with 151 watts. One of the nice thing, things here is that Python can actually keep track of pesky units. So you, uh, if you throw in something in Celsius or in Fahrenheit, Python can make sure that the units are properly converted, as long as you keep the uh, keep reasonable track of the units. This is a skill that students need to have anyway after uh, coming through a couple of physics classes. Then we can do some other uh, exercises as well, including making a plot, which is relatively easy. Plot, dot, plot, temperature versus power. Plot a grid with it. There we go. We can further annotate it, etc. Et and then we get to the wet bulb temperature in terms of complicated graphs. Here. Finally, um, so ask a couple of questions. They can answer those questions here in Markdown again. And we um, and we can then keep on going and have small questions that we keep on asking. Where maybe in the first question we're really spelling it out: What is the wet world temperature given this and that and that? And then in the second question they can do the same thing, but then with slightly different units, um, which is both instructive in terms of computing and what do we need to change but also an instructor of, of, okay, what are the buttons that we actually can change? Depending on the class that you teach, teach you may want to include a slider here so that they don't need to touch any code whatsoever. And finally, we can use some links to other events and issues outside of this direct network, uh, uh, to a uh, notebook to show, to give some depth to the knowledge, like, yes, what is the temperature in, in this case, Cleveland, or in this case, Chicago, over time since the 19, or since the 1760s? Well, how is climate change happening over there, etc., etc.? That kind of background information we can integrate directly into the computers and, uh, computer exercise, meaning that everything is a well-integrated situation together with what they're learning in class and together with any other kind of reading that they're doing. All right. Obviously, these kind of notebooks um, need to be developed further and further. I'm sure there are going to be a couple of scaffolding steps that I need to, uh, that I'll come across during the semester. But this is the general idea of what we're doing. All right. So, as a conclusion, um, we have the option right now, and it's real easy and it's real low overhead to start setting up computing classroom projects at uh, OSC, at the Ohio Supercomputing Computing Center. Um, 
and then students, all students, can log them on, um, access them through class.osc at the EDU. Pre-setup uh, pre environments are already there for Python, for R, for Q, QGIS, and other options are definitely available as well. This creates a powerful uh, learning experience for the students because they need to do this kind of computa computing um, environment with real life tools that they're going to see when they're um, uh, when they're graduating that they're going to need when they're graduating but meanwhile it's also as well integrated as possible within the overall learning uh, goals for the particular class so in this case for environmental physics learn about the physics of the environment um, if you want to have uh, if you have any questions if you have any uh, thoughts on how to do this yourself, if you have tips for me, etc., etc., feel free to reach out uh, to me, t.hoes at csuohio.edu. And uh, all these resources are heavily available. There is all kinds of help available. And feel free to reach out with any kind of questions. Thank you so much.